everyone, this is Monique from Butterbee Scraps. I am here with the tutorial that I promised showing you how to use some of the toggle clasps and bead caps in different ways. So these are just some of the items that I created. Um, there are tassels of course, decorative tassels. This one I put little beads on the end of the chain. There's these earrings. So all I did was I took just a little rhinestone and hung it from a jump ring down in the center of the loop there. I've also created another similar earring. This one, however, I've put a bead in and I've done some wire wrapping around the edges. There's this earring here, which has a little flower in the end and these stamens which just kind of dangle below. You of course can make stick pins. So this is an example. I haven't actually glued it together, but um, I've got a long hat pin. I put a bead cap, a rondelle spacer, and a larger bead, and then just one of these large bead caps. And I think that makes a beautiful stick pin. I've also oops, created this charm. So what I've done is this is another toggle clasp and I've hung a rhinestone in the center and chain along the bottom of the loop. Um, here's another idea. You can take some of the toggle clasps. You can see here that I used this is the lock and key. There's a key in here as well that I added from the toggle clasp. Uh, most of these are just charms from the store, but um, just wanted to show that don't don't be afraid to use these toggle clasps for other uses. It, do, it doesn't always have to be used for closure on a mini album or a bracelet or whatever. And last but not least, these flowers I created. I actually started off with the square uh, bead cap to create this center uh, layer there. So. Anyways, I'm going to show you how to do some of this stuff. I think first what I'll do is I'll show you how to create a tassel. Move some of this other stuff out of the way here. So of course, you're going to need a bead cap. So I mean, you can see here I use the square one, I use the smaller one. Now I'm going to use the longer one. You're going to need some chain. So I've got some chain here. And you're going to need some wire. I'm I'm using 20 gauge wire. Just cut off a piece here. It doesn't have to be too terribly long. Let's see if I have a ruler here. I'll tell you how long I cut. This one's here is probably about six and a half inches long. First thing I do is I straighten my wire and I use nylon jaw pliers. You can just use your hands if you'd like. And I'm going to start a wrap loop on the end. And you guys, if you're curious about the tools I'm using, the method of creating these loops and everything, I have a tutorial series which goes through the tools that you need materials for creating these charms and then methods of creating the different loops and stuff. So I'll link those videos down in the description box below just in case you're starting out. Um, but for the sake of those who know how to do this and to speed up the video, I'm not going to explain in detail what I'm doing. Okay, so I just start creating my wrapped loop and then I open it up similar to what you would for a jump ring. I just twist it. And then I start adding wire to it. Just wanted to find an end there. So I'm just going to put the last and I'm just trying to gauge how long I want this. And I do cut my tassels at different lengths. I'm just going to cut it right there. And I like to put odd numbers if possible, like five to seven. This one I only had room for four, but looks just 
looks good enough anyways. But yeah, I would say the minimum you want to go with is probably four lengths. So now I'm going to vary the length a little bit. I just vary it by like two lengths. So this is the third chain I'm putting on. For this bead cap, I'm going to put a fourth on and we'll see how that works. And when I vary the length, I um I try to I don't always go from longest to shortest, you know, like you can see there's long, short, short, long, that kind of thing. Um otherwise, I don't know, I just I, I like to be a little bit more random. Okay, so now this is the tricky part. When you've got a lot of a lot of chain on here, it is not that easy to close the loop or to wrap the loop, I should say. I just closed it there. Oh, these pliers. Remember, handles fall off, and then I they don't open by themselves. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the top of the loop, wrap it a couple of times. Cut the excess with my flush cutters. And I like to tuck the end there. And you can see I've got way too much wire here. So then I just thread the bead cap on, pull it up nice and snug, make sure the chains are not getting caught. You can see the chains can get caught in between the different prongs, so just make sure that isn't happening or it's going to loosen off on you. Okay. And sometimes what I do, like for this bead cap, for example, it has quite a wide top. And you can see I put a, this is a three millimeter spacer bead, just so that it wouldn't wobble around on top there. It secures it. This bead cap has a narrow enough top that I don't need to do that. So I'm just going to grab it with my bent chain nose pliers and do another wrapped loop. I prefer the wrapped loops partially just because they're more secure and also because I am really not very good at estimating what length to cut off just to do a standard P loop so yeah see you probably could have got away with four inches at or so of wire there tucking that in but you got to make sure or be careful not to crush the bead cap and there's your tassel quick and easy takes very little time and I mean try to find a decorative tassel like that and if you're if you do find one it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg so anyways that's one way you can use the bead caps um, another way, of course, I showed you this was wire wrapping a bead into the center. So I've only created one of these earrings. I'll show you how to do the other one. So I've got, this is 22 gauge wire. It's thinner than the 20 gauge and it is much easier to wrap. I've got my toggle, my bead, and the top of my earring. So I'm just going to straighten this wire again and let me measure the length of this for you. It's about ten and a half inches long. 
so the first thing I do is I kind of try to find the center of course I'm going to do this opposite to this try to find the center of the wire and then I just start wrapping around the one side If, you, if your hands aren't strong enough to grab it and, and tighten it down, just grab a pair of pliers. It's not a big deal. Now I'm going to the top of that wire. And you know what? You can... There's no real set way to wrap this. You wrap it however you like. I'm just trying to follow what I did on this one because of course you want the pair of earrings looking somewhat similar And then once you're done with that end, I cut it off with my flush cutters. And flatten it with my chain nose pliers. Okay, so we've secured the one end. And you thread the bead on. And you wrap on the other side. And actually, I've started by wrapping under on this side. Because I went over on the first side. So, and again, I'm just trying to do a mirror image of what I did on the other side. You can see that bead's not going anywhere. And then the last thing we have to do is just attach the earring. Uh, I don't know why you call this. <laughs> anyway, I would normally use silver. It's just unfortunately I don't have silver in my stash. So I am using um, the gold. And then you want to make sure, of course, that you put it on the correct way. And there you have your pair of earrings. So, um, another earring I was going to show you, because I, I really like this one. I think it's really cute. I thought people would want to know how to make it. So, I'm going to take, I need the bronze bead cap. I've got two head pins, and mine have little balls on the end. I just think they look more finished that way. 
Got a little acrylic bead cap flower. Of course you have the two beads for the stamens. Oops, and the thing for the earring thing, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is make these stamens. So all I do is I thread the bead on and unfortunately you're gonna watch me struggle with a p-loop. I use a p-loop and not the wrap loop because you want them hidden in the flower. If you start using wrap loops it's it, your stamens are gonna get too long and you're gonna see the wire yuck <laughs> sticking out the bottom. Anyways, um, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is make them the same length obviously so I'm using my my first set of earrings or my first earring to gauge the length on these and you can see I made them slightly different lengths not by much but So here's the tricky part, for me anyways, is gauging how much wire you need to do your P-loop. And I try to put too much because you can always cut more off, but you can't add more on. And I use, these are my tapered round nose pliers, I use the very, very tip to make the smallest loop that I can make. And see, look, I was like way off. So let me cut part of this loop off. Like I said, I'd rather leave too much than not have enough because then I gotta get a new head pin and start all over. Oh, my hands are shaking. Still too long. I know guys, this is painful to watch, but I am a perfectionist and need to have it just so. Okay, there we go. There's my P-loop. And I'm just going to make sure it's flat. So let's try this again. I'm going to cut this shorter. Still cut it too long. There we go. So now what you need is a length of 20 gauge wire and I'm going to use this one. This was the extra wire that I had from the first thing I showed you. And <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I got a nice flush cut on the end. And I'm going to do a P-loop, again, with the very, very tip of my pliers. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... You know what, that's not quite right. It's a little off center. So, just going to cut a smidge off. There we go, that's better. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the P loop by twisting it like you would a 
uh, jump ring and then I'm gonna thread the two stamens on and close that P loop back up oh boy I don't know why my hands are shaking so much Okay, and then what you do is you thread it, thread your little flower bead cap there, your acrylic bead cap, and I flare these guys out. Then we go up through the center. You want them flared out about the same as the other one, obviously. Then I put my bent nose pliers on the top and create a wrapped loop. A lot of people would put the earring wire on here now. Um, I just find it easier to wrap if I can hold on to the loop with my round nose pliers. These guys are pretty easy to to open and close. There we go. So there we have our earrings. Now the last thing I wanted to show you was these flowers. I love these flowers. And all I used was these square bead caps. What I did was because they're not um, welded at the corners, I flattened them out. I actually took my nylon jaw pliers and flattened them in the center. You can use chain nose pliers too, I'm sure. And then I've got these round nose pliers have two very large sizes on them. These are actually the Vintage pliers and I only got the Vintage because I couldn't find another set of pliers with a, a large round nose on them. But you know what, if you don't have these, grab a pen. You can use a pen to do this. So anyways, what I do, I'm going to use a larger size. Is I grab the end and I just roll the flower. And you can see this is the outside of the cap that I have up and I just roll it on the outside. I don't twist the pliers. I'm pushing with my hand to make sure that gives you a nice round curve. And then what I do is I'm actually going to flip these over and go with a smaller end. I grab the end and I just twist it out slightly. Sorry guys, my recording stopped there. Um, I caught it in time though, so you didn't miss anything. So there's the one, and I just do that again for the second one. You need to, to really make it look right. I like more full flowers, so that's why I make two. There we go. And then all you have to do is layer them and stagger them like that. And you have a beautiful flower layer. You can see here that I put a, I used a bronze bead cap. And this here is one of the flower centers I have in my shop. 
and then I just put a doily on the bottom, put a brad through it. There's a cute little flower. This one here I use the silver. This is a flower center from my shop with this bronze daisy which is also in my shop. So you can just layer metal as well and different colors of metal. Don't be afraid to mix colors. So anyways, that's it for my tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you guys come up with any other creative ways to use the bead caps, the toggles, whatever, share them. Spread the word because um, you know what? There's always more than one use for everything. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you.